for a thing. The hurricane <laughs> bike rupture! Absolute destruction coming out from Liquid. Solo, beautiful feeds grip onto Mugi. Rampage for no one. GG is caught. Welcome back, guys. Game three in this best of five. Alliance taking on Espada. And we've got a bit of a different draft this time. It's a little similar, but we're not going to see Trian anymore. I don't think Lacoste. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, pretty much the same as uh, we had in first in game. But the uh, Alliance wants to show how to properly itemize Ember Spirit. In the previous game, I think this is a classic example of uh, how to lose a game with the... Uh, bad itemization. I'm talking about Ember Spirit not getting the Battle Fury. He pretty much didn't deal the damage. He was just using the spells with... Uh, it didn't really feel effective, especially against a hero like a Phantom Lancer. So let's check this one out. Uh, Shaker's being banned Ten out. Now Chen, Ember Spirit. A little bit of Five stolen picks remaining. and we have Tiny and Crystal Maiden. So that's pretty much the same what the Spada had. Bounty Hunter is still in the pool if... Uh, Immersion wants to play it. Yeah, because he's running out of heroes. No Phoenix, no Earthshaker. Treant removed, which could have been his if BZZ goes on that tiny. I think maybe the Bounty Hunter will make an appearance, but we'll see what goes on. If you're grouping up with that Chen, it can be difficult as a Bounty Hunter to deal with the big five-man pressure. A good little respect ban out on the Rubik there. As Alliance did play that Kind of position five Chen for Tiger and Insania switched into the four. But yeah, that, that Ember Spirit build, like, I, I struggled to say it was bad. It just wasn't optimal, right? Like he You know me, Gary. I'm an honest guy. You're a very black bad. and white. Yeah, yes. you're very, very absolute. You're Sith Lord Lacoste. Five seconds remaining. I struggled to say, like, y but we can see the merits in it, right? He didn't die. He survived a lot. He just didn't do any damage. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> missing out. I'm always something. trying to stay positive, see, learn new things, try to see good things in what people are doing, but sometimes there are things that are just bad, as you mentioned, uh, black and white. Well, there's the bounty ban, like you, uh, like you called. Immersion really is at the end of his rope in terms of signature heroes and picks that he likes to play. We are, we are, we are left with the ogre in the pool, though. That is a potential. Seconds. Final ban in the second phase for Esparta. Is Clink's worth a ban here? I don't think so. Yeah. They already have Ember Spirit. They can sneak in Clink's. I think this was just uh, a pick to have against the Ember Spirit. Then they swapped the lanes, but mm. uh, Esparta didn't want to swap the lanes, which I think it was also not the best choice. They could have kept... Dragon Knight against the Clinks on top lane and have Ember on mid against the Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer can't remove your shield. It's pretty much a guaranteed uh, damage. So Ursa banned out. That's uh, really interesting. Ursa is one of the better heroes against against the Tiny. Yeah, he absolutely slaughters him in lane. And it's one of those one of those heroes that just wins lane matchups against melee heroes, right? If a Sparta think about picking the Dragon Knight again, or if they think about the Alchemist, any of these heroes, for instance, struggle against an Ursa, especially in a 1v1. They've got their time, though, to pick up any hero they want. I really am worrying about Immersion, though. I guess Winter Wyvern's still in the pool, and that's a possibility to come in here. A decent lockdown for the Ember to maybe cancel out TPs, kill him through that duration, but also decent against Chen, but opting to go for the maximum disable support hero in the Dark Willow. So then you've got Brambles for the Roots, you've got the Curse Crown for the Stun, and the Fear from Terrorize to lock down that Ember Spirit. Yeah, the hero has everything so two roots and uh, a lot of stuns is part of taking a different remaining. approach in second game five seconds remaining and potentially the dark willow tiny lane as well 
toss people into the brambles can get very obnoxious. Very squishy though on the Espada support lineup. Two heroes that can get jumped and killed very quickly and there comes the Winter Wyvern now. I'm surprised that Winter Wyvern survived in picks for so long. A very good reset tool. Yeah, also the combination between Chen and Winter Wyvern is amazing. You send someone back, use Winter Wyvern either ulti or heal just to keep them in place and you have remaining. Ember Spirit and Chen this time. So Ember Spirit will be Five really active. Remaining. Chen sends him back. He comes back with Remnant fully heals, which means Ember Spirit will be farmed as well. He's not going to waste time. Even just like the send back with a sleight of fist. Yeah. You get, yeah. Some pretty nifty things you can do in there. Espada. What are your plans now? So far today has gone reasonably well for them in these kind of longer drawn out games, but it feels like their their main playstyle is brute force. They react with numbers, they TP, and they play very aggressively in that kind of uh, response tactic style. Crystal Maiden and Willow can definitely bring a lot to the table if your heroes are getting dived, but you need core heroes that can kind of draw your opponents in. Deal with the Chen rotations, deal with the Arctic Ring Burn, harass from Winter Wyvern. Admiral Tonka. Okay, so that's their team fight potential. They can easily jump out of the fight. Uh, Pagana is still in the pool, so maybe Alliance can grab either Pagna which is a good steel pick against the Winter Wyvern. It's one of the better heroes you can have. And they have a lot Ten of uh, spell remaining. casters. Also, the tower damage combined that with the Chen. They've remaining. been known for this early aggression. And they might force back. Ember Spirit out of the mid lane as well, right? And yeah, put Monkey into the mid against the Kunkka for that, for that matchup. Because Kunkka definitely one of those heroes that can completely stifle your mid laner just by denying out the creeps with the Tidebringer, but Monkey King, not so much a guy who cares. As he can return fire in that melee mode. Is Ten seconds also, remaining. Winter Wyvern synergizes nicely with Monkey King ulti. Five Pretty good setup remaining. for for Monkey. Radiant team ban. So Legion Commander. <laughs> Why do they ban Legion? If they want to go for Let's say Phantom Lancer. They already have good answers. They have Ember Spirit and Monkey King. Both of them can build into Battle Fury and you have a Winter Wyvern. So I'm not sure why why Legion Commander. Hmm. Like he can dispel Ten a lot of that stuff. Like he can dispel Dark uh, Willows spells, yeah. Crystal Five Maiden. But that I don't think you should spend a ban on it just because of it. That's oh, it's quite interesting, isn't it? I don't know what else struggles up against it. I mean, <laughs> is this another time they're thinking about Huskar? Surely not, right? Against Monkey Ember Spirit. Because th th there aren't that many heroes that, you know, particularly care about Legion being in the game. The, ma the main thing is, like, Legion plus Blade Mail is annoying against certain heroes, right? And that's the main kind of duality of Legion that you look towards. But I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that's like, we really don't want to play against the Legion Commander. I'm still thinking about Pagna. It would round up Alliance's lineup really nicely. Or if they want to go for something like a Panda, Panda's still Radiant in the pool. Team pick. Mirana. Mirana for them. I banned out the Spectre. And they pick themselves up a Mirana. A pretty versatile hero alliance not giving away any of their actual set in stone lane matchups obviously remaining. we know what kind of preference they want if a sparta do go down the route of tying your kunker in that mid lane it will be the monkey king up against them and their final hero is a morphling lacoste feels like a bit of a desperate pick but that's often what morphling is you know at the very end you're like what hero Ticks all the boxes, what hero can get away from danger, into battle, and hit buildings as the game progresses. <laughs> not, 
not too many good spells to steal as a morphling. Well, he actually has them. Some good from Ember Spirit, Winter Wyvern, Monkey Bur King Stun, Marana Leap. Marana Leap to get the attack speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nifty. ILTW Morph. I'm not sure how to feel about it. My, my natural reaction is kind of meh. But the more I think about it, no, this, this could be a very strong Morphling game. Spot will need to get uh, Spirit Vessel this game. Dark Willow should be the one purchasing it against Winter Wyvern, Alti against uh, Monkey King as well, so he can't lifesteal. Chen Heal, one of the better items uh, that they can get, and Dark Willow naturally builds into it. Let me show on the Crystal Maiden, pick up all the slack with the wards. So Nyx Kunker, BZZ Tiny. And Boxy is on that Monkey King, so they've put Mickey on the Ember and Koikva will be the Marana. I think at the start of this game we're going to see potentially some early smokes just to try and get info because it, it feels like, especially on the side of a Sparta, they need to know what kind of lanes they're up against. Having that info incredibly important when you know you've got melee cores and there's a Monkey King on the enemy team. Or you've got uh, who, who does Morphling want to lean up against? I mean Morphling against Ember, I guess. Morphling plus one against Ember Spirit. I, what's the chance of a dual lane mid, Lacoste? Well, we can see dual lane mid just for a couple of first minutes. So they're gonna start with uh, Kanka being their mid. And, uh, yeah. They want to have Monkey King on the mid lane. He bought Orb of Venom, has two Shared Tangos and a Flask. So this is this is the matchup that we saw coming. Yep. When you play Monkey King on a mid lane, or, I mean, you can play it in a side lane, but most of the mid lane, you want to get that Orb of Venom against the melee hero. So you can try to dominate. Get that one extra attack in. Yeah. I mean, it's easier for Alliance to... Guess how they're gonna lane? They're gonna start with Monkey King on mid since they have uh, Kanka, Tiny. Th this is basically three melee cores since Morphling does not have a, a lot of range. It does make Alliance's job a lot easier, and that is why a Sparta going deep here for any kind of information they can grab. Mickey scouted, and Tiger just behind him. Safeguarding that Observer Ward placement, BZZ and Immersion. Helping Misha push just a little further forward into this Radiant Jungle. Spotting those three heroes, though, means that Insania can go and grab the Bounty Rune up at top. Get the double there. As we look to be setting up for now, anyway, BZZ hunting in the actual lane down bottom. Is he, is he going to go and try and grab Creep Wave or something? I, I don't know what's the plan here. He can't grab the creep wave anymore, at least not the first one. Just trying to harass people. <laughs> they can't get in. Mickey TPs to the tier one. There we go. Into the lane properly. Tiger, though, might not have the same luxury. Misha chases forward. Bramble Maze not connecting. And Tiger TPs to bottom as well. Both That's a long TP. We'll be able to tango back up reasonably quickly, though, as we do have Immersion going top. ILTW loses a little bit of HP to Insania's Arctic Burn, but look at the damage back from Immersion. Insania dropping incredibly low. There's an arrow connects with a creep, I believe. Misha needs to block the camp on bottom. We'll successfully do so. Tiger, no creep for you, Mr. Chen. Nyx on the Kunker, 4 and nothing against the Monkeys, 2 and nil. Boxy not quite able to just yet get the triple, or the quadruple hit, sorry, onto Nyx. Finally gets the job done, and level 2 is here, so potentially a Bounder Strike plate available for him. And there it will be to get a lot of damage and a bit of lifesteal back. Sal's being forced down bottom already, this Espada lane. Doing a significant amount of damage into Mickey and Tiger. As this Chen feeling a little bit lost early on. Boxy on the mid lane got four more Jingo stacks. 
top lane should be in favor of uh, Alliance, Winter Wyvern and Mirana. Once they hit level 2, they have so much kill potential, but they need to have Arctic Burn ready. Koikfa could go for a kill here. Doesn't level anything up at 2. Could go for the leaps. Think about the arrow. Not going to show his hand too early on. We'll take a Shadow Realm hit to the back of the head. Nyx grabbing a regen rune top to just refill back up and return nice and healthy to the middle lane. Gets a free torrent out of it as well. Just to burn Boxy a little more. I know. Top lane, bottom lane, both having a bit of a fight. Insania looks like he might just die, but the first blood is on ILTW thanks to Koikva with that decent range on the arrow. Yeah, that was a fight without Winter Vibrant having a Winter's Curse. So Position 5 getting a first blood, which means he's going to get Boots of Speed. He's waiting for something, maybe to bring the items on top. Who's using the Courier? Boxy. Okay. It takes a little bit more time. Boikwa didn't drop the items right away, so... Insania is bringing items to him. Monkey King. All in on move speed. He wants to be able to kill the Kunkka. Kunkka has Boots of Speed as well. Pretty good. Oh man, he gets the double. Double kill on the creeps. And he can, sp I mean, not spam, but use Torrent more often on the mid lane with uh, Crystal Maiden Aura. This is the problem for a top lane. It's not gonna go well. He TP'd already, so TP's on cooldown for the next 30 seconds. I, they're just gonna get stomped on this lane. Bottom lane, also doing fairly well, but uh, Spada has an upper hand. ILTW is uh, role playing. Oh man, what a dodge. Boxy, you beautiful bastard. That little sidestep there. I mean, it's so difficult in this river area as well. Like, Torrent, if he caught him there, takes up the entire AoE, but just ever so barely scrapes past. ILTW, I don't know, role playing is eternal envy in this, as this morphling. He's just max agi, doesn't care about any strength or HP. But he tanks one arrow and he definitely dies. Now they're level three. Mirana is actually level four with the uh, boots of speed. He's gonna get harassed a lot. Has no region whatsoever. He might, he might die again. This Morphling's not gonna have a good time at all. Even if he doesn't die, down to half HP, burning through half of his mana pool as well. Half a hero remains on top for that Morphling, but Mickey, less than half. Drops very low to this BZZ spam. The Sata comes in with a bit of a blast and a bit of HP regen, but you cannot regen through well, that absolutely alpha amount of nuke damage. That Tiny brings to the table. They've even got a Frostbite on the little Sata here. Might be able to grab a little bit of bonus gold. And there we go, 67 for BZZ's Tiny. Kunkai is forced to go to jungle. He can't lane anymore. 18 and 3 CS, not, not atrocious. But Monkey, 26 and 15, and the Mirana not too far behind either. Definitely looking Arrow. good in this game, absolutely. Curse Crown is there. But Insania doesn't care as Koikfa with a long range arrow makes it look so easy. Oh, LTW, Max Agi, getting chipped away at little by little, taking damage and more damage and don't die. Very close as Koikfa jumps in with the arrow forward. Damage not enough here as the Curse Crown will land and Koikfa feeds. Insania will not be able to get the trade back as Morphling. Baits in the Marana this time around. Down towards bottom, we miss out on a couple of kills though. BZZ and Misha both fall. And as Boxy makes a rotation from mid. Is it Xenia? Oh, the stick charges. Emergence going in deep for this. Winter Wyvern still alive. Quickfoot with the arrow slides on by and Immersion. Might just be able to walk this one off. No, the leap and the Star Storm, the double tap, and the final arrow kills. That was a, a bit greedy from Marana on top. Uh, didn't see what was happening on the bottom. Uh, who got the kill? Boxy uh, killed BZZ. And Tiger killed Misha. They got a two for nothing special down bottom and it looks like a Sparta wants some revenge. With double damage, tiny. Come on then. 174 damage, but the torrent after the X will catch Boxy's Monkey King and uh, even under his own tower. BZZ will slap him down. Good rotation, but on the bottom lane, Amber Spirit is getting a lot. Chicken might be in problem. Tiny one hit. Ooh, good, good shield. Got timing. Let's zoom into that Harpy Stormcrafter. Oh, 
Okay. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Oh, she's got a nice necklace. <laughs> and she's also wearing clothing on her top half. Stomp and the little uh, chain lightning. Out onto the tiny, but it's middle lane where the boat will fly forward or sail forward into the Monkey King, allowing for that TP to complete the boundless strike. Would not come out in time. That's a really sneaky play. Top lane, 25 CS on Morphling, not as bad as I thought this lane would go. But they're moving around with the uh, Winter Wyvern, so they can't really pressure top that much. As Morph gets levels, it's going to be way harder to kill him. 1-1-3 one, one, build. Every single... Radiant Observer Ward has been placed in the past minute and a half or so has been spotted thanks to the the, the line of wards here from the Dire team from mid down to bottom. Misha has spotted out all of the vision that Tiger's been trying to place. They also see the Chen army moving in, but they don't see this top maneuver. Or maybe they do, and a new Dire Observer Ward is down there, and Monkey King spotted as ILTW just waveforms away. So the vision here, very defensive and very... um. I don't know what the word to use is here, but you know they're, they're spending a lot of money and a lot of resources very early on, potentially losing out on any investment for wards as the game progresses. And so often it, it feels nice when you've got four wards in stock and you put all four of them down, but you know that six minutes later you're going to have maybe two wards total. Winter Wyvern has one point in Cold Embrace. X mark on the mid lane. Again with a tiny and again with the Crystal Maiden. Chain stun it into Boxy and that will be a simple kill. Splinter Blast comes out from Insania. Got to be careful though with Nyx here. Whoa, that tower was really low. Yeah. If Kunkka decides to go for Heaven's Halberd, first item, th that's going to be really huge. Like against a hero, like a Monkey King, it just cripples him. And it still gives you damage, it still gives you evasion against Mirana, against Monkey. Oh, Boxy. One hit, two hits, two more. There's the Boundless Strike and a the pause. pause. Bottom crashed. Yes, <laughs> under the tier one tower, dying to creeps. Quick for definitely crashed. Six to five, not much of a lead here for Alliance. Feels like Asparta have kind of got away with this laning stage. They're not at, they're not at any big deficit. They've not really lost out on anything. I'm not sure how they took the tier one mid tower. They killed Monkey King two times only. Yeah, but managed then to kill the tower. They don't have Ring of Basilius. They don't have anything. Yeah. Well, I guess Monkey King. Went bot to gank, he went top to gank, and he's died twice. Yeah, I mean, Kanka pushes the lane with the Tidebringer, so creeps are always going to be... It must have just been the first yeah. catapult wave at five minutes that Kanka Definitely. just exploited. Well, looks like we are nearly ready to get back underway. Tiny and Maiden need to react to this. I don't think Tiger can get close enough with a Centaur. I don't see Kunkka <laughs> dying here with the Maiden and the Tiny behind. I guess it depends on which way he runs. <laughs> Monkey King does have the ultimate available if they want to actually fight properly here. And Marana, with no TP, cannot arrive. And like you're pinging out, Bound the Strike already used by the Monkey. So Kunkka, what's the story here? Wukong's Command, Penitence out, Nyx. Three hit, hit, that's the fourth. Yep. Boxy chases, okay, Kunkka. Will fall, Misha and BZZ, just a little bit too far away. Can't even ping out the chain lightning. You can't? Nope. Can you? Uh, where is it? Where are we? Down here? No. I, I can ping its HP, but I can't ping <laughs> its spell. Bottom lane, ILTW. Not quite max agi, 800 HP is what he's sitting at, but he can morph very quickly, up to 1300 back 
He goes into the Ember Spirit mode as Immersion has died elsewhere. Boxy looking good as Mickey's still fighting. RTW dropping low, but has the morph back into his normal hero. Send back onto Mickey. The X mark, the boat, catching the Chen. Mickey. There we go. Back home as Insania arrives, but dusted up, he will die. Quick cold embrace just to buy some time, but really, there is no escape here for the Winter Wyvern. They wanted to give a last hit to Morphling if possible because he's struggling. That did not happen. Also, mid lane Monkey King farming right now with uh, Kanka. Pretty much the same farm as, as Monkey. Good rotations from Tiny and uh, Crystal Maiden, but because they were forced to move mid, it means that Tiny is not going to have that much farm. I mean, Crystal Maiden being caught here as well. Misha, a very tasty morsel for Mickey to pick up and burn through. <laughs> Bulldozer straight over the poor little maiden as Middle Tower finally getting some pressure from Boxy. Illusion runes come in. Catapult is here for the siege damage on that tower. Well, TW will defend for now, but that catapult's still going. Top lane, Koikva, terrorized. Not going to happen. Not sure how Immersion died there. Still falls as BZZ unable to keep his Dark Willow alive. Nyx aiming for a Halberd as his first item on the Kunker. It's quite, quite interesting. Yeah, it's really good. It gives him tankiness, it gives him some damage, as I already mentioned, and it's amazing against Monkey King early on. Quick and easy tier one bottom for Alliance, though. Ember Spirit going for the Yule Scepter. Try and mess around with that Kunker's X Mark combos. Yeah, also he can dodge. Dark Willow spells. Pretty good. They have nothing. Okay, they have X Mark to stop the send back from Chen. Crystal Maiden. Careful! That is a wild wing, and it is being protected by the Ember. Good slight dodge there on the Terrorize, but the Bramble may still connect, and that allows the X Mark with the boat to come in from Nyx. Can he Remnant? He can. Make a god, gets away. No problem whatsoever, but that Kunker, look at how much damage he's doing to the Crystal Maiden. Whack, whack, whack with the Tidebringer, he goes. Oh, poor little Dark Willow. And on the top lane, they managed to kill Tiny as well. This is slowly falling apart for Espada. Well, they're still going on bottom, you know. Nyx is back in. Oh, LTW says hello. Into the Ember Spirit mode. Jumps forward with a slight in the chains. Chen caught with Insania there as well. Mickey thinking, hey, I don't really want to get involved in this. LTW has a Flame Guard on Morphling. I will chase the Crystal Maiden, and I will very likely get a quick and easy one over onto Misha here. Another Remnant and the Burn Through from the Flame Guard gets the security on it. Nyx and RTW don't know about Monkey King though. They don't know about the Monkey King. The Boundless no, Strike is there onto two. Searing Chains to follow through. Down goes Nyx. The Kunker's gone. RTW might be in a spot of bother there. Hey Mickey, you're so fine. Slight dodge the X mark. Oh man. You're Fucking so fine. Fucking monstrous. You my mind. Hey, Mickey. hey Mickey. Hey Mickey. Alliance nope. playing really well. 5,000 network lead. Why do you know that song? What is, is there a reason you know that song? Like a, a cartoon or a... I don't know where I know no? it from, but uh, okay. it's pretty popular. Why? I know that there's a story, so tell it, Gary. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel that you can't tell the story. It's fine. I was just All wondering right. why that song came into your head. I don't know. So this is going to be a Shadow Blade pickup on a Monkey King. There's no need to go for a Battle Fury this game. He can go for, as a second item, you can go for Maelstrom. You can go for Echo Saber into BKB. They tried a Winter's Curse into Arrow Top and failed spectacularly on BZZ. Yeah, because... The status resistance, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Insania being chased by Immersion. Dark Willow, careful. Misha will... Bodyguard the Dark Willow back and get the kill on the Santa at the same time. But it does feel like this game is spiraling out of control just a little bit. Tier 1 top, still ready to be claimed by Alliance as Tiger and Senior and now Quick for ready themselves for that objective while Boxy scouting in the middle lane. Quite interesting that 
you know, he's played middle here against the Kunker, but he is very definitely the position three. You know, he's roamed around. He's not getting this guaranteed farm consistently. As Mickey finds RTW, BCC misses with the Avalanche. Unfortunately, the jump away too speedy from the Ember, and it puts BZZ in a position that he's caught between oh. three Alliance heroes. I love what the Alliance is doing. They're just moving away from Vision, so Maki King can score hits, and he can toss him back. Three-man battle strike as well. Cold Embrace comes in. The boat is lined up for the Torrent to land, but the Winter's Curse might buy some time. Monkey King, Boxy, Wukong's Command will fly out now, and there are heroes caught inside this cage match between them, but ILTW with the Jingu and the battle strike. He's kept himself in a good spot to battle. Mickey trying. Oh, he dispelled it with the old scepter. Gets rid of the Jingu. And ILTW tries to go for a very optimistic TP. But Koikfu with a triple kill shuts it all down. While Tiger split pushes top lane. They didn't even use Chen in this fight. Mac King plus Winter Vibrant combo. We talked about it during the pick stage. Now they executed it pretty much perfectly. Alliance playing really top-notch Dota right now. Very calmly moving around the map, causing a lot of problems for Esparta. 10,000 net worth lead, 16 minutes in. We're looking at a 92% win probability for Alliance right now. Not bad at all. 8% for Esparta. Let's see if it's lucky eights for them. Morbid Mask on the Morphling, struggling. They saw Monkey King, but I don't think they can kill him with just Dark Willow and Crystal Maiden. She does not want to use a sentry. They're going to actually try to go for Kanka. Shadow Blade off cooldown. For a couple more seconds, yeah. 2000 HP. A little bit hard. Well, what's Mickey up to? Maelstrom after Yules. No Octarine shenanigans just yet. Tiny with. A much later blink than we're used to seeing from BZZ as Insania. A quick instant uh, Winter's Curse onto the Dark Willow and a speedy retreat. And Boxy shadow bladed up again, just perpetually hunting for any of these Esparta heroes that are out on their own. <laughs> the buddy system for the Dark Willow and the Maiden, though, holding hands, going for a stroll through the jungle. Maybe a bit of a picnic Radiant over on the Radiant side seven. of the map if they can connect in with BZZ to push a tower. That's all hunky-dory. But <laughs> we, we need a heat map. We need a heat map. of where, Because Crystal Maiden and Dark Willow, they've run here, they've run back again, then they've run down, then they've run here, and they've just run around in their jungle for the past minute and a half, two minutes. Now they finally smoke up with their Kunker and Tiny, but they'll be moving ah. into the uh, gathered and disciplined military pack of Alliance heroes. Ready with the Invis rune, Mickey with the two-man chains. In comes the Avalanche toss, BZZ combo up. Nice X mark, but the mm, Yule Scepter will cancel it all out. Remnant forward with a slight again sent back to home, and Mickey can rejoin the battle whenever he so pleases as BZZ jukes the arrow but still dies. Monkey King, can you jump forward for more? Well, Mickey can, but no chains to get the Willow trap. Dial T W. Wait oh, for. it didn't connect. He didn't use it. Searing Chain's still off cooldown, and he's, he's got Slight ready now. Misha to try and slow them down, but they want the Morphling. Chains, again, not connecting with the Morph. Into the Ember mode. Boxy trapped inside the trees. There's the Dark Willow with the Bedlam, killing off Boxy, but the Winter's Curse. Morphling has been trapped, and Mickey with the damage. Looks like they should be able to clear him up. The Morph, the Morph, into the Ember Spirit. HP pool, and RTW survive somehow. Torrent forward, and Tiger gets caught, but the Mickey Ember finally. Finally, ILTW is dead. It took them long enough, but Alliance secure another team fight win, and they're not done just yet. Oh, Slight into Yules, and that allows him to stick around for the chains afterwards, but in comes Tiny again. Avalanche toss kills off Ember. He can buy back and Remnant in, but I think this fight might finally be done. No, oh no, I called it. Mickey buys back and Remnant's in. He is hungry. BZZ, Avalanche toss back to the creep wave as well. They've got the conquer. And a Sparta bleeding out. They've got no way to wrap up their wounds. That was a valuable buyback. Good call. We're going to take the tower. Maybe even pressure the tier 3. Sparta does not have enough team, team fight. Once they use the combo from Kunkka, if they can't kill anyone, there's a lot of save potential from Alliance. You have a Winter Wyvern 
with the cold embrace you have Chen sending them back uh, a lot of stuff to focus and they're trying to go on Ember Spirit with the boat with everything and he just uh, uses the Yule Scepter to dodge the combos this might be a good kill well, that arrow looked like it might have saved him what's the price they do get the die back on Ember but they lose their Morphling and Tiny Quakefoot and Tiger clearing up but I have to call you out on something there what? You said just the Yule Scepter. Yeah. Mick, Mick is dodging with everything, dude. Yeah. He's slight dodging torrents and all sorts of shit. It's I'm not really calling you out. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just praising Mick because it's just glorious. No, Mick is playing uh, amazing this game. Monkey King uh, might need to go. Yeah, he has it uh, queued up. Uh, BKB so he can survive. 10 second BKB that early on will grant him advantage. And uh, it also opens up the Roche for them. They have... Cold Embrace, they have Chen Army, they have a medallion, so good good Roche lineup. Chen will be level 13 after using the Tome, 35% XP gain with that's paying off. That's more experience for the Dyer to take when he dies, though. Boxy moving in towards the BKB. Already have one for the Mirana, 10 seconds, nice and fresh. Dire Observer Wards again all over the place. They're scrambling to get any semblance of vision they can while Radiant, two deep wards, very nice and new. Shiny ones in this Radiant sector of the map. And they will see the Crystal Maiden, but they don't want her. They want the Morphling very sneakily, very quietly, though. A Winter's Curse with the Wukong's Command on top. Arrow nice from Koikva. It catches the Crystal Maiden. I think he wanted the Morphling, to be perfectly yeah. honest. So I guess nice from Misha. I should correct myself to save ILTW. He took that arrow in the knee for his teammate. What more? Can you ask for from a teammate, Gary? Huh? From a hero. Or from a hero, yeah. Amber Spirit. Remnants away from the three heroes that gather around the area that he wanted to put him under. ILTW, Dragonlance, Morbid Mask, going for the more punchy right-clicky build on Morphling. He can't afford to go for different kind of a build, which is pretty standard. The Lincoln Sphere, but not... He can't really dodge anything with Lincoln Sphere besides Winter Wyvern's Curse. Nyx wants a Shadow Blade after his Halberd. Where are we sitting? 8,000 net Like, Kunkit is the top net worth on this dire team. I and mean, when you look at his items, it really, really is a sad story that's told. Well, this Espada match. Game three here in Espesta 5. Alliance leading two to nothing. And very close to closing it all out. Moonlight Shadow gives Insania that invisibility. ILTW has died to Koikva as the Winter's Curse catches Kunkka. Can Insania do more? The Freezing Field is going to miss out here as the X Mark drags him back with a cold embrace into the boat and the toss. So BZC looking to clear up, but Insania is still technically alive. Finally taken out of the game by the Tiny, but Koikva is allowed to clear up now. Triple kill with a Beyond Godlike streak and Misha cleared up by Mekke means Alliance are in the driving seat. Yeah, they might take one more fight like this, and uh, Espada feels like they're gonna need to call the game. BZZ, blink ready. Sees the. Oh dear, he must, he must have seen that. Must have seen the Bounder Strike. He's pinging it. TP out from Boxy, and BZZ he was waiting for his Echo Saber, so he doesn't make the move. Could have found a kill, but he does see the Monkey Bottom now. Still has this. Eh, still has this opportunity. Blink, Avalanche, Toss, Dead Monkey King. That's a huge chunk of gold, 700 gold for him. What does he get downgraded to? Is he Monkey Prince now? Monkey <laughs> Monkey Jester? Monkey... How do you call that guy where he dances? He the has a funny cat. Funny Jester. Cat. Jester? Yeah. All right. That, I didn't know the word. <laughs> or I just ruined it. it. It's a fool. You know, a Jester fool or a fool. Or a yeah. Fool, yeah. That's definitely what he gets downgraded to. Does a little dance. Oh, does he have ulti? Sure does. And a follow through, not gonna come. Tiny just blinks out. And yet again, a bit of mistiming there between the Wyvern and the Mirana. Arrow, it's gonna connect. <laughs> okay. Oh, Moonlight Shadow will be here. Alliance, very timid, not quite sure what is 
lurking over that uh, that little hill there. Tiger, are you sure you want to be going up there? Thinking about it. He wants to get some vision down in this area. Maybe grab up the bounty runes. Asparta will hold their own for now, though. Going as five. Maybe looking for this tier one bottom, but they will smoke, move forward. BZZ leads the charge. Nix, the rear guard. Insania, 30 seconds for Winter's Curse, so still quite some time until he can truly defend this bottom tower. Spamming out with Splinter Blast is great, but he will need the rest of his team to come in. That's a uh, Monkey King with a BKB. He just needs to use the chicken. Insania, do they have a dust? The dust well, is popped. do, but he's over the trees. Nice, Terrorize sends him the other direction. And they'll finally get that tier one bottom lane. Top getting shoved in. Mickey showing here the Yule's Maelstrom into Octarine Core and not just the Maelstrom Octarine. Going for a fight down at bottom and hunting for ILTW. That's a long TP. Oh, dearie me, Morphling. How has this happened? ILTW, Yule's up into the air. They will get a chains back onto Tiger, but that's the Morphling gone. Dead for 50. And this might be high ground. Yeah, they're drawing on the minimap. Uh, Insania with the buyback, which means Winter. Skurs is ready. Smoke. Does Verona have ulti five seconds for it? Do they have one, two, two BKBs ready? Where, where was Morphling TPing to, did you see? Was it like no. all ball back? Like because it, it looked like it's really, really long TP. Maybe someone TP'd back. Maybe he was being greedy. Also try to TP to the same tower. Yeah, it felt like three heroes had yeah. like TP'd before him. Dark Willow getting a rooted up. And Mickey. Just going to go with a lawnmower and burn down the Willow with the Flame Guard as the rest of Alliance inside the Roshan pit, claiming the Aegis with the help of the Medallion that Tiger brings to the table. Point for full Mjolnir, BKB, Dragonlance, Boxy, like you mentioned, the secondary BKB carrier. Marana takes it. She would feed most of the gold and deals most of the damage, especially with that uh, Mjolnir finish. What is... Um, all right, they're trying to make a move. Boxy. Uh, there's the BKB. Immediately comes into play. They thought they could bait and play around with the Monkey King, but he is no fool. Quick fingers. Jester no more. He gets upgraded back to King status. <laughs> what does Morphin have? He's uh, getting closer to the BKB. That could be their big item. Morphin... In every single fight, tries to copy Ember Spirit, which is good. Nice. Does well, or Monkey King. These are his uh, primary targets for Morph. Chen Army, split pushing nicely. Double Mud Golem with a Satyr. Punching away at these creep waves coming in. What does Dota Plus say? What's the win probability? 96%. Asparta have lost 4%. They've lost 50% of their 8%. <laughs> Which is a lot. They are going to take the high ground again, not wanting... Yeah, it's immediately drawn out. Ember Spirit's like, guys, they're here. This is how they play. They set up on the high ground. The Dark Willow gets arrowed up. In comes Insania. Winter's Curse. Pull the trigger. There's Nyx caught. Morphling laying into him as well. Mickey thinking about his targets. Goes with the chains onto two and about the strike. We'll land on three. The boat flies over, but it's not fast enough. Nyx is still in trouble, and he is going to be swept up in the dangerous storm that Alliance brings. A tiny has walked into the eye of the storm. Unfortunately, it's not as quiet as he was once told. Alliance making an awful lot of noise right now. And they are potentially minutes, if not seconds, away from winning this grand final to qualify for Hamburg. BKBs are on cooldown. Okay, Marana has a BKB. Monkey King, ulti ready in a second. Another arrow on a Dark Willow. Chains into arrow, into boundless strike, into death. That's a dieback. More than a minute for a Dark Willow. Wukong's command to zone. Any potential defense here from Esparta, but these racks glyphed up will surely crumble as Alliance break the base. Esparta, not much left in the tank now. Misha just skirting the edge of vision, trying to make sure that any 
Movement down towards the bottom racks can be stopped quickly, but Alliance, they take one lane and they go back for the safe, stable shrine. They still have Aegis on Mirana and the items are slowly piling up on their side. Mirana, 3.5k gold. Ember Spirit decided to go for a Radiance instead, just a casual Vitality Booster to boost his HP, and then he can go for Octarine. I don't think Espada has enough to take this game. Tiny going all in with the damage. Crystallis plus double hit from Echo Saber. With a cold embrace on Tiger keeps him alive with a Glimmer Cape to help. Freezing field expended, Insania dead to BZZ, so a couple of kills on the supports of Alliance there as Esparta finally move out of their base and get something done. But there is so much more to still do. An uphill climb for Esparta, without a shadow of a doubt. Smoking up, try and clear out some of these waves from mid to bottom, maybe get some D-Wards going as well. Radiance are scanning. And Boxy hiding in the trees. Quick, but one minute left on the Aegis is just behind the monkey, but he's TPing all the way back home. Monkey King going for the wave cut. The bodyguards are the Chen Creeps. Misha, Immersion, BZZ, do you scout this? Moonlight Shadow gives Boxy. Nice little umbrella of safety. The yo observer ward up on the high ground. Tiny with a quelling blade cut the tree, huh? Yeah, yeah. Is that what he did? Yeah, they found him. They need to just group up, go as five. If they want to take it slowly, go with Marana ulti, try to get a pick off. If not, go near the base, use Monkey King ulti, just siege the tower. Yeah, look at what uh, Insania is drawing. Push out the lanes, then we can go. Well, Morphling is uh, growing, really. Waveform, attack targets, level 20 talent. But they have vision on the top side of the map, so they should try to play around that. For now, Alliance. Keeping Mika nice and comfortable as he farms into that Octarine core you mentioned after the Radiance. A Sparta in this Radiant jungle, signaled out by Insania, knowing pretty much where they all are and in fact smoking in towards them. They've got another smoke as backup. If this one fails to connect, a Sparta back to the high ground that they can hold safely. Come back and play from this bounty room spot or even deeper, yeah. I mean, Alliance are pinging back even further towards this shrine. 30 seconds until it comes off cooldown, so a very good platform for Espada to fight from. Still not feeling strong enough to really face up against Alliance and what they've got in the tank. Monkey King. Jumping from tree to tree. Happy little boy. They need to push out the waves, try to take a fight. Monkey King is alone on the bottom. There's the bottom ulti. And uh, is this the second smoke as well? It is. Insania used it. Crystal Maiden. Very low HP, but not dead. BZZ gets jumped on by Koik for shredded. ILTW has jumped forward with a waveform onto Insania, but the cold embrace keeps them all nice and cold and comfortable as the Winter Wyvern flaps her wings and flies away, soaring away from ILTW as he does chase and looks to commit but the BKB is about to wear off and ILTW with no mana nothing really left to do will get arrowed up and that is it for you five They're hero go wipe end. go mid and end who has a buyback on side of a morphling. Esparta morphling just look at the top That's the golden it. the golden lines around it and GG is called that is it Esparta tap out alliance 3-0 victory in a best of five to take themselves through to ESL 1 Hamburg 2018. I gotta say, Alliance is looking really good. They qualified for the major. Now they qualified for ESL Hamburg. So I gotta say, they have a little bit of different style what other teams are playing. They're sticking to, I would say, classic, original, 
style that they were playing a couple of years ago. A few little flavors thrown in, you know, the Boxy Monkey King, Mickey with his very, very talented Ember Spirit play there. But that overall game style, very similar to the old Alliance. Asparta didn't look too good in this grand final, but they went up against the more polished team, the better prepared team anyway. Yeah, I would still call Asparta a uh, second best team in CIS region after Weepy. I don't think Windstrike can compete against them at this point. Uh, feels like they have a couple of issues that they need to work on. But uh, Alliance, uh, I gotta say, they have good uh, good drafting capabilities. Uh, sometimes you, you could see that they made a couple of mistakes. This could have been an easy, clean game, but uh, a little bit of kill, kills here and there to feed. But uh, they're looking good, man. They definitely look very crisp. And that is it for us today. We've completed Southeast Asia. China have been done. Killer Pigeon and Lizard, Nomad and Mofara are done. We're done, myself and Lacoste. EU, of course, now concludes. But we've got one more region. The Americas. Moxie and Bowie will be taking you through that. So make sure you check up ESL1 at Dota 2 on Facebook. Find the stream links, which should pop up for you nice and easily for the remainder of the ESL1 Hamburg qualifiers. Well done, buddy. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure working with you again. Hope to see you soon. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, it was a pleasure. We had a couple of good games. Uh, maybe if region was split to CIS and EU, but uh, this way it was way more competitive. Oh, for sure. We had some absolutely amazing games. The 80-minute one earlier today. Yeah. Never forget. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, don't feed. Yeah, I do. I want to get in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are you dead? Yeah, I'm dead. Never, dude. Dude, look at that macro pyre, dude. Oh my.